This is very strange because I never put myself on camera. I'm not used to it, but I wanted to come on here and give you guys some tips for any high schooler that wants to go into videography like I did. And I know it can be hard because nobody's really out there to give you advice as a high schooler. Because you're so young, doing videography in high school, I learned a lot about how to use a camera and how to work with people. And so I wanted to give you guys a few tips on how to get started. A short disclaimer that I am by no means an expert. I just had these experiences in high school and I know a lot of kids who, especially once my high school, that really want to do this and make money from it. I'm a film school student right now, so I'm still on the journey. I just wanted to tell you guys about my experiences and what I've learned from all of it looking back. And hopefully it'll help you guys out. So my first tip that I have for anybody that wants to go into videography would be to film everything. I hear that a lot of people say, oh, you know, I can't get a job because I don't have a portfolio. As a high schooler, specifically, the best thing for you to do is film things around your school. And I'm talking about sporting events, concerts, join like any club, any newspaper, join film club. You just gotta be careful about what you're allowed to do. You should always ask people, hey, can I film you? Hey, are you okay with this going on my social media? Because that can always be an issue. But there's a lot of different things around your high school that you can film, like different types of things. So the difference between shooting a sporting event, which is very you know fast paced, and shooting a jazz concert, which you just kind of have to set your camera up for and get the right lighting with the horrible lights that you're gonna have in an auditorium. Yeah, so I think doing all those things, not only will it put experience on your portfolio and show people, hey, I know how to film things, but it's also gonna teach you how to shoot for different scenarios. So if a client sees your work and wants to hire you for their concert because they're doing a concert and they saw your concert on, on the video, that'd be great because you already have experience with that. You know how horrible it is to light anything in an auditorium very bad. Or if you are doing a highlight reel for some some baseball player, then you already have experience because you filmed the baseball team at your school. So once you have all these recap videos or short little videos that you've done around your school, you will have something to show clients. A lot of videographers always say, you know, your first few gigs are gonna have to be free because you're not gonna have any experience. I don't like the idea of taking free work. Just because you're young doesn't mean that you should do work for free. You know, there's a reason that people want video done and it's because they can't do it themselves. I could go on a rant about this forever, but I think you need to realize how big of an advantage it is to be in high school. Even if it does seem like it's a disadvantage because you're young, I think it is an advantage because you have things going on around you all the time. Even if you're in college, honestly, like there's always something for you to film. The only thing you have to worry about is permission, but other than that, you should be good to go and you should get all the experience that you can onto your portfolio before you go out and, and try to get clients. Now my second tip is offer your services. Nobody is going to come to you right away. That's something that might happen down the road when everybody knows your name and everything, but nobody is going to just, you know, come at you with all these offers of, of all these different events right away because your name hasn't been out there long enough. So what you need to do is you have to offer your services to people. So what that means is your local businesses that you go to all the time, offer them, you know, hey, I want to do a little short video for you guys as, as an advertisement. I can give you a discount. And then they're like, oh my God, that would be so good. We could post it on our website. We can post it on Facebook. We could put it on our Instagram, all this stuff but they had never thought about it until you went in and suggested it. And look at that, you got a job. Now this is all about the hustle. So the more businesses that you go to and the more people that you offer your services to, the more chance that you're gonna get somebody that says yes. You might even offer your services to 15 people and they might all turn you down, but you only need that one person to get started. Nobody's just gonna come to you at first, so you need to start offering your services and I guarantee you'll get at least one person that says yes and then you'll get the ball rolling. Now, my third tip is something that a lot of people worry about and I also worried about it because we see on Instagram or YouTube all these people with this big equipment. But when you're starting out, do not underestimate your own equipment. The more that you know is gonna be valuable. So even if you just know how to use your beginning camera in a good way, just the fact that you know how to work a camera or that you know how to work iMovie, you can get clients. You also don't need all that fancy stuff like a gimbal. You don't need all that fancy stuff to make a local business advertisement, trust me. The gimbals are cool. Okay, I understand the drones are cool, but it is not necessary at all. It should not ever be an excuse for you to not go out there and sell your stuff because you don't have the necessary equipment. Now my fourth tip is to be professional. People will take you a lot more seriously when you put out a good image. And this goes for, I think, any industry, but especially with videography, I've noticed that when I had business cards and when I had a website and when I had an Instagram dedicated to my videography, people were like, oh, 
she's serious about this. Like, this is her thing. Like, this is, this is what she does. If you can put out a good image that you are doing this because it's your passion and it is your business and you're really dedicated to it, then people will notice that and they will trust you more. In high school, when I was really doing all this stuff seriously and I was getting clients and, and starting to build myself as a videographer and my portfolio and all this stuff, I realized, you know, I want to make a logo. As you can see, if you look at my channel, I came up with the name Valography because my name is Valerie and then Ography was like, just like videography. People remembered me solely because of that. People would just call me Valography like, and as funny as that seems and as cliche as the name is, if they remember your name Valography, when your classmate's aunt is getting married and she needs a videographer, she asks your cousin, oh, do you know anybody from your school or anything that could do something for me? And they're thinking, and they're like, who do I know? Oh, Valography. Like that's literally the first thing that will pop into their brain because it's been so instilled if you post it on Instagram, if people are calling you that in school, even if you have to embarrass yourself a little bit. At the end of the day, even if it is something as cliche as Valography, trust me, it will go a long way. Okay, so my fifth and my last point is probably the thing that I think wraps this all together, and that is show your work off to everybody. Put your work out there. I understand being insecure about your videos. I understand that completely, but it is so important to show people your work because the amount of offers that I've gotten just off of putting stuff on my Instagram alone, from people DMing me, hey, I saw your video that you put on Instagram and you used the hashtag videography and I saw it and I want you to do a video for me. Like, I would have never gotten that client if I hadn't have posted it on my Instagram. So that's why I left posting your work as the last tip because I feel like it takes all these things from before and really amplifies them because once you post online, people will know that you're serious about this and you wanna make money from doing videography. So I hope you guys like this video. If you have any more tips that you think I left out, I definitely left out some. I could probably do five of these videos. Let me know in the comments. And you know, like this video if you liked it. This is like nothing I've ever done before. I never am just talking to the camera. So I really wanna know what you guys think about this and if I should keep doing them because I enjoy this and I enjoy talking about all this stuff because it's what I love to do. So I hope you guys like my background. I was gonna film somewhere else in my room, but I was like, I don't know how I can just like not film with this. If you guys can guess what movies these are, because they're very blurry, that'd be a cool comment. I'd be very impressed with that. Also, I can see that people are actually watching my video. Peace, stay safe. It's 2020, so stay safe. <laughs>